These white LEDs, which are popular and everywhere, are deceiving you. We've always seen them as having a yellow color, yet when turned on, they emit a bright white light. They are practically everywhere because they are the most efficient light source we have today. But what if I told you that white LEDs literally don't exist and that we've been deceived all these years? In reality, they are actually blue. But how? They appear yellow, yet they emit white light, but in reality, they are blue. How is this possible? Well, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. A few months ago, I watched a video by Veritasium on the history of the blue LED. It's a great watch, and I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. But here we're going to summarize it a bit to provide some context. LEDs, or light-emitting diodes, are found all over the world today in almost every possible application. Lighting, advertising screens, monitors, cars, phones, flashlights, LED strips, you name it. They are everywhere, and the most common one, the one we see the most, is the white LED. But in reality, the white LED doesn't actually exist. To understand this better, we need to take a closer look at how LEDs work. An LED doesn't get its color from its plastic casing or cover, but from the electrical circuit and the materials inside it. The first visible and practical LED was created by a general electric engineer named Nick Holognac in 1962. It emitted a red light. A few years later, Holognac's colleagues at Monsanto developed the first green LED. You'd think that just a few years later, a blue LED would follow, completing the RGB set and revolutionizing civilization as we know it. But no. For decades, despite numerous technological advancements, creating LEDs in colors beyond red and green was nearly impossible. This is because, as we mentioned earlier, the color of an LED is not simply a matter of adding a filter. Instead, it depends on the chemical and electrical materials used in its construction and how they function. The challenge of producing a blue LED is a long and fascinating story, thoroughly explained in the Veritasium video I mentioned earlier. But to summarize, nearly 30 years after the invention of the green LED, and after countless failed attempts by engineers worldwide, Japanese engineer Shuji Nakamura, despite numerous setbacks and being fired from several jobs, finally created the first efficient and practical blue LED in 1993, at a time when almost no one believed in him. Nakamura's journey was incredibly difficult. For years, he worked in relative obscurity, struggling with materials that didn't behave as expected. He was experimenting with gallium nitride, a material that was extremely difficult to work with at the time. Many researchers had tried and failed to make it work, and Nakamura faced enormous skepticism. He spent years perfecting the process, enduring professional setbacks, lack of funding, and technical failures. But his persistence paid off. His breakthrough not only won him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014, but also revolutionized lighting and display technologies. I've told you this whole story to provide some context. Creating an LED of a specific light color is incredibly difficult, and blue was an especially challenging one to produce. But now, back to the main question. What are white LEDs? Earlier I said they don't exist, yet today almost everyone has white LED lighting in their homes. We see white LED lights in cars, on screens, and in many other devices. So where does this white light come from? Well, they're actually blue LEDs. Once Nakamura and his team succeeded in creating a blue LED, the company he worked for aimed to develop a white LED but they couldn't afford to spend another 30 years developing it. Instead, they came up with a clever trick. They added a layer of yellow phosphor on top of the blue LED. This phosphor absorbs most of the blue light and re-emits a combination of wavelengths that appear white to our eyes. And I say appear white because it isn't actually pure white light. We are simply being deceived by the way our vision works. But why phosphor? What makes this material so special? Phosphors are materials that exhibit a property called fluorescence, meaning they absorb light of a certain wavelength and then re-emit it at a different, usually longer, wavelength. In the case of white LEDs, the phosphor layer absorbs much of the high-energy blue light and re-emits it as lower-energy yellow light. This is why if you look closely at large LED panels, flashlights, or energy-saving LED bulbs, 
you'll notice tiny yellow squares. If you power them with a much lower current than usual, you'll actually see the blue LEDs underneath. The yellow coating on top is the phosphor that makes us perceive the light as white. The human eye perceives this mixture of blue and yellow as white due to the way our visual system processes color. Different phosphor compositions can also be used to adjust the final hue of the light, creating cool white or warm white LEDs. The efficiency of this conversion isn't perfect though. Some energy is lost as heat, and some of the blue light still makes it through unaltered. That's why white LEDs often have a slightly bluish tint and why they still emit a significant amount of blue light, despite the phosphor coating. Now you might say, wait, didn't you just say that an LED's color comes from its internal materials, not its outer covering? And you'd be right. But this is where the title of this video comes in. This isn't a truly white LED. White LEDs as a standalone technology don't exist. And who knows? Maybe creating a pure white LED is actually impossible. But at this point, it doesn't even matter because we already have a solution that works and is commercially viable. However, this also means that white LEDs aren't what they appear to be. They are blue LEDs in disguise. Now, let's talk about a major issue, blue light. As we've seen, white LED light contains a lot of blue light. This happens because even though the yellow phosphor filter absorbs most of the blue light, a significant amount still passes through. You've probably heard warnings about blue light affecting sleep cycles. This is absolutely true, scientifically proven in fact, and is one of the biggest contributors to the widespread insomnia of our generation. Blue light exposure, especially at night, suppresses the production of melatonin, the hormone that regulates sleep. This is why using screens before bed can make it harder to fall asleep, and why modern operating systems and apps offer options to reduce blue light emissions or even switch screens to grayscale. Furthermore, in environments where relaxation is essential, such as bedrooms, it's highly recommended to use warm lighting with minimal blue light emission. On the other hand, in workplaces, bright white lights are often used to keep people alert. Public street lighting in many places avoids white light, despite its higher efficiency, because excessive blue light can disrupt the sleep cycles of animals, insects, and even humans. But that raises an interesting question. If we already have functional white LEDs, why are scientists still trying to develop a true white LED? There are several reasons. First, the current phosphor-based solution isn't perfect. Some energy is lost in the conversion process, reducing overall efficiency. A true white LED could be even more energy efficient, reducing waste and making lighting systems even better. Second, phosphor coatings degrade over time, leading to changes in color temperature and brightness. A true white LED wouldn't suffer from this issue. Finally, eliminating the phosphor layer would simplify LED manufacturing and potentially allow for even greater advances in lighting technology. Scientists are experimenting with alternative materials, like quantum dots and new LED architectures that could produce white light directly. While we're not there yet, research continues in hopes of making LEDs even better. One thing is certain, the development of the blue LED changed the world. Thanks to it, we have the modern displays you're watching this video on, energy-efficient lighting in our homes, and countless other technological advancements. It wasn't an easy journey, but Shuji Nakamura's invention shaped the future in ways we never could have imagined. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. I read all comments, so leave one below. I have a question for you. What kind of lighting do you have in your bedroom? Do you use warm lighting and sleep well, or do you have bright white lights and struggle with insomnia? Let me know in the comments. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.